Hey guys, it's Mr. Sheline here. This is going to be oops, this is going to be the lecture video for the unit 6.3 notes covering electromagnetic waves. So what you're going to see here is that this set of notes is going to be just a lot of reading a particular chart and understanding uses of different wavelengths. Uh, slash different frequencies, how energy changes from one kind of, of wave to another. So as this is called, it's again, EM waves, electromagnetic waves. And so learning objectives for this, this set of notes is going to be three things. One of them we've been working on already. We're going to identify each kind of, of electromagnetic, uh, electromagnetic wave, we're, and we're going to understand the transmission frequencies as well of, of the waves and, and specifically in how the energy kind of, uh, you could say moves. And of course, solve basic wave problems because that really hasn't changed. It's the wavelength times frequency to get your velocity. So, okay, so remember, um, waves transfer energy, not matter, um, not, not matter, okay? So, uh, but but here's what's really cool. What's why why electromagnetic waves are so cool, and why they get their own little section, why they get their own specific focus, is because they don't require a medium to travel through. So that's why um, we feel the heat from the sun. Uh, these kinds of waves slash particles can move through the can move through any kind of space and they don't rely upon matter like atoms, molecules to bump into one another. So electromagnetic waves do not require a medium to travel. So again, that's why we get heat from the sun. That's why you get sunburnt when you get out and go outside. That's why um, you can just basically, uh, you could, that's why like one of the challenges of uh, space travel is knowing how to deal with, contain, and uh, mitigate like gamma radiation, um, residual uh, gamma radiation that just happens to float around in space. So, because um, it can go through most material, uh, which we'll get to in a bit. Not in de terrible detail, but just to kind of mention it. So, what are electromagnetic waves? Well, these are waves made of just vibrating electrical charges. It's basically just electrons or something that you that closely resembles an electron which we'll get to in here just a bit in a bit it's basically they're they're vibrating little electron like things okay so the vibrating electric and magnetic fields hence why electromagnetic um these move perpendicularly to each other. So that means that they, they move in right angles to one another. So they're, they're, we can measure both in the form of uh, transverse waves. So it's, it's basically what this picture shows here. So you see that this we have an electron here and it's moving in a particular direction and there's an electric field, uh, which we haven't gotten to and we don't really need to understand terribly what it is other than it's just basically residual energy uh, around a particular electron and then there is the magnetic field which the magnetic field is going to be well what's the attraction and repulsion um between other objects uh, another like say electrons or protons or neutrons um and they they work uh not so much against one another it's like past one another and we can measure both of them um but it's just to this this is all this is really good for is just to really show why they're called electromagnetic we kind of will get into it, but really it's just going to be looking at their frequencies um, and their wavelengths. And, and so just understand when we measure wavelengths, it's measuring um, specifically, it's going to be measuring the, the uh, electric fields. So, but that's, that's not obvious and it won't be obvious because again, we're not going to terribly focus on it. So in a vacuum, all electromagnetic waves travel at the, uh, at 300,000 kilometers per second. Um, this is essentially just the speed of light. So, so light is an elect electromagnetic, electromagnetic wave. So the speed of the EM waves in a vacuum is usually just called the speed of light. And hence, and also look here, it says in a vacuum, uh, such as space, um, it gets a bit different when you're like, say here on earth, because, um, what happens there is then with visible light, let's say, um, you have too many 
particles, molecules uh, that are bouncing off of one another and refracting, reflecting. Um, and it's going to change the speed, it's going to change the frequency, and it's going to change uh, basically how we perceive those waves. So as a great example, that is why the sky is blue. It's because the more or less the, the, the energy from the sun is being shot towards us, enters our atmosphere, and the way and, and the way that it and the particular angles that the light bounces off um, or bounces off of just all more or less all the water molecules within our, our atmosphere just happen to be at a frequency that's blue. Um, you know, if a couple things were changed, it could be very possible that we'd be very used to um, instead of blue skies, we'd be used to green skies or blue or sorry, or like yellow skies more often if if our atmosphere was slightly different, if it was made of different materials. But because water vapor is so prevalent, that's mainly what the light bounces off of. And so anyway, it, it, it changes the speed. That's basically the point that I'm getting at. Changes the speed, it changes very slightly, changes the frequency. Um, so anyway, so here's a very blurry example of, <laughs> of uh, speed of electromagnetic waves. So in a vacuum, again, it travels roughly about 300,000 kilometers per second um, in the air, say here, um, uh, in our atmosphere, roughly about 299,000 kilometers per second, which doesn't sound like that's a whole lot of a difference, um, but it is. Uh, it can be significant. Um, it can be significant, and it is a variable you have to consider for, especially if you're trying to figure out how far away particular planets are uh, that are outside of, say, our solar system. Um, you have to take into account how quickly light is able to reach, uh, basically, you. Um, and then there's water. So water is, is 226,000 glass is 200,000. And then say like a diamond is 124,000. Now that does obviously vary because are we talking about a cut diamond and how well is it cut? What's the number of times it's been cut? What shape has, been, has it been cut? But generally it's 124,000 kilometers per second, which is, that's insane. Okay. So wavelength and frequency, like all waves, electromagnetic waves can be described by their wavelength and frequencies. Okay. So we use the same equations here. So if we need to find the velocity of how quickly it's moving, we just use the uh, equation we've been using, lambda wavelength multiplied by the frequency. Uh, if we need to find wavelength, this is what we use. If we need to find the frequency, this is what we use. So nothing's changed there. So as a uh, electromagnetic wave moves, uh, it encounters objects and the vibrating electromagnetic fields of the wave exert forces on the charged particles and the magnetic materials that make up the object. This interaction causes the particles are getting energy, blah, blah, blah. It's basically to say that electromagnetic waves uh, just hit matter and they make they add energy to the matter. And so as an example, um, the electromagnetic waves com that come from the sun will hit the asphalt on uh, it will hit the asphalt on the ground. And it's going to cause those those uh, atoms to vibrate and those electrons to vibrate more wholly, um, and and it's going to gain energy. And so, and we then that energy is then radiated off of the asphalt in the form of heat. Okay, and that's why you don't really want to be barefoot. Say, like in your driveway, if you've got asphalt in your driveway, uh, you know, at, at two p.m. on a hot summer day, because you're you're gonna not really burn your feet, but not too far from it. Uh, you can cause some damage also to your poochie dog. So, so always be careful poochie dogs on hot asphalt. So um, just real quick. So, so how do we describe these things? So, cause it seems that, that it's, it is weird that you have a substance here that can move through uh, a vacuum. What is it? So, uh, or a, a wave that can move through a vacuum. And especially because we've been talking so much about how like sound waves and there are other waves that have to hit something. How can this be? So uh, real quick, just, and this is skipping a whole lot of people, but we'll, we're just going to skip straight to Einstein here. Well, he was able to take a whole bunch of people's explanations, everyone between Hertz to Planck's or Planck, Max Planck, and and a number of uh, Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton, a whole bunch of other people that have been working in, in the field of what's called optics, um, which is just a measurement of light, 
Um, and Einstein was like, hey, you know, this stuff can act both as a particle and a wave. Okay. And, and so he then uh, coined the, I, this, this uh, name at, uh, for, for, these, for these little things, and he called them photons. And so what are these are massless little bundles of energy that pretty much act like a particle. So then the question is, well, what's a particle? So paint particles are sprayed between the between these two slits right here. OK, and they coat only the area behind the slits. OK, well, it's a particle. So in that idea, it's like a particle is a little thing that it, tra it just it's like matter that just travels straight through. And it and it it goes upon and it follows a path that it's been provided. OK, and it, and it reaches its end the way it's supposed to reach and that. Um, that's it, you know, so like the little, little, little itty bitty teeny tiny paint particles that are being shot out of a spray can, uh, they would go through this, this, you know, those two slits and would replicate more or less those two slits. Now, but then you have water, which water we know acts like a wave, okay, in waveform, and water uh, waves produce an interference pattern passing through two slits. So, um, so meaning that if we were to, as you can see here in this picture here, I'll use my mouse, that here are the waves and what we would think is that if the waves acted like the paint can uh, or the paint does uh, paint particles, what we would expect is that we would just expect that that it would actually not look like what's being shown. We would expect that the waves would basically just look like this. OK, if it were to if those water waves were to be like that paint can. OK. So, again, this is this is this is what we would expect the water to do if the water acted like the paint cans over here, which we know they don't. And instead, what we see is we see these waves bouncing off of one another and trying to fill and trying to expand out into through the medium as best they can. And so this is what we see here. And then so we're basically going to marry these two ideas. We're going to combine those two ideas. And then this is how we describe uh, electromagnetic waves. They fly around they fly around as like energy, like so electrons fired. These are electrons being fired here. And so they, they in the air, you could almost think of it like this, that they're being shot out of a spray can. But then once they get to uh, once they, they get to this double slit here, when they're given like the same kind of uh, what we experiment that they're given this confined or constrained point of entry, what we see is that once they, they bounce between, um, bounce through, bounce off of these edges, we actually see them create waves just like we see here. So it's a really, really interesting kind of idea that they, they it, it, it's a combination of both moving as a particle and in waveform. It's, it's a really curious thing uh, and, and one that is a bit hard to kind of put together. But just just understand that that is how it works. It's it's the per, they exist as a wave function as or in wave form, I should say, and also in particle form. OK, you can almost think of it. They exist as a particle, but act like a wave. You could think of it like that. That's probably the best way to, to, to put it. So electromagnetic waves have a wide variety of frequencies and they vibrate each other, you know, every once each second. So that's basic. What is that? That's 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 frequency right there. Others vibrate trillions of times per se each second. Again, that is that is frequency um, spectrum. And we call this the electromagnetic spectrum. We, we there's there's a very particular range of different waves and waves that you have heard of that waves that you use every single day. Um, waves that you come in contact with every single day. There's not a day where you don't come in contact with one of these kind of similar, just just waves in general. So so we're quick going to just kind of look at this image here. So actually, I'm going to use a rectangle. So here. Here is where our range of and I'm going to move my little toolbar here because we've got frequency on the bottom. So anyway, there uh, lost my train of thought there. Sorry. Um, so we have uh, in this section here, we have what radio waves. Uh, we have their frequencies. That's where I left off. So we have their frequencies on the bottom here. Um, so so as you can see, as we're going from the lowest energy, and I should actually have you guys make a note of that. So this is the lower lower energy. So lower energy. And then it should say actually lowest, but whatever. And then over yonder on the other side, and we're going to make this guy green on the other side here. 
This is highest energy. Wow. I bet you guessed that before I even said that. And I'm basically writing cursive because that's way easier. So highest energy. Emergy. <laughs> so we have the highest energy right here. We have the lower en lowest energy over here. So it's, it's a spectrum between radio waves, and gamma rays. So... And as we can see here, the frequency increases. Oh, don't do that. The frequency increases as we go from, um, once we go from radio waves to all the way here to gamma rays. And what we see here up top with the wavelength and something we should have some idea of is that as frequency increases, wavelength decreases. And so here we're starting with, the higher wavelength and we're, we're going in a lower wavelength. So it's, it's actually reversed. So we're going from, so wavelength, wavelength wise, uh, gamma rays have the smallest, uh, wavelength, but have, uh, but have the highest energy. Um, while radio waves does have the highest or has the, the, um, lowest frequency has the largest wavelength, but the lowest energy. Okay. So, so, and we'll go through more or less the, the uses of each of these, but, but real quick. So we have radio waves here. We have microwaves in this range. We have infrared ra uh, waves right here. And I'll just note that it's like somewhere right about, oop, wrong thing. It's somewhere right about here is where cell phones exist. So that's why I say like you're involved or you use, uh, really they're, they use microwaves, but it's, it's a frequency that, that kind of bounces between um, radio waves and microwaves. Bluetooth is closer to radio waves. Um, the waves you use to call people is closer to microwaves. Okay. Or even to text people, um, or to use Wi-Fi. It's, it's kind of between microwaves and radio waves. Uh, but anyway, uh, infrared ray, uh, infrared waves, which we'll get to here is the little sliver of a visible light that allows us to see. Um, it's, I mean, this, it's actually quite incredible. Here is where we get the full spectrum of visible light that we can pick up. Um, and now there are other animals, like there are animals that are able to see infrared, um, and can see a lower frequency and, uh, that's advantageous for how they live. But here's how, how we've adapted. We, we are able to see this little sliver of, of frequencies here, um, in between all these radio waves, microwaves, infrared rate waves, then you have UV, which is ultraviolet, which is still part of like just light in general. Um, but it's just, a, it's at a frequency that we can't pick up and that we have to kind of, we have to manipulate some things. We have to manipulate some, um, some lighting in order to actually make sense of it. Um, like black lights, for instance. Um, and then after that, you have x-rays in this range and then finally gamma rays all the way at the end here. So, so this is the spectrum of all the different waves of electromag electromagnetic, uh, or sorry, in the electromagnetic spectrum. So again, I'm not really gonna read through these cause I basically kind of walked through this. I'm gonna walk through, excuse me, what they're used for. So radio waves, of course, we, we, we know what radio waves are. Um, radio waves, we use these for audio transmissions. We use this for radar. Um, we use this for, for MRIs. Um, so when you go to, if you, let's say you have a really nasty, or well, let, let's just say worst case scenario, you've got some sort of tumor that's really, really deep in your body and x-rays can't pick it up. Um, or you have some sort of really nasty, um, you just have something wrong inside of you. Let's, let's not even make up an idea. You have something very wrong with you. Remember MRIs are the ones that, that you, it's the imaging uh, with that giant machine, big circular machine where they, they basically toss a whole lot of magnets around you, magnets and receivers to kind of uh, toss some, some frequencies through you um, to see what's happening. And they create an image from those little bumps and, and uh, uh, bumps and, and uh, messaging, I guess you could call it. But anyway, what we most know it for is basically car radios, FM radios, AM radios. Um, uh, but we also have, we do use them for for uh, TV as well. And then good old radar, you know, little blips on a screen, screen to, uh, that we pretty much just see in movies. Microwaves, we all know what we use microwaves for. This is to heat up our food. Uh, it's just waves that are emitted in such a way that, that more or less heats up the water within food. Um, this is why your bread gets soggy is because all the, um, 
basically the water gets all jived up and moves around and doesn't crisp you know it doesn't take the water out it leaves the water in um almost in a way a kind of it doesn't exactly um it doesn't exactly how could you put it it just moves the water around more than the water was previously moving and so it just makes it feel soggier okay used for communication such as cellular telephone satellite signals and to heat your food in microwaves okay and then you have the good old infrared so this is for this is basically the transmission of heat okay and they, it's not only that but also for detectors there there are special machines uh that that utilize picking up uh, the infrared light, the infrared waves bouncing off of animals, um, which is just uh, their waves that measure heat. But it's also used for reading CDs and also for remote controls. Uh, so when you're flipping channels using a remote, you're using infrared uh, light in order or infrared waves in order to change the channel. There's a visible light um, in this blurry picture. This is the, the spectrum of the frequencies. So each color each color, and we'll go into depth more into this down the line, but each color here has its own frequency. So here's red. Red is the lowest energy. Um, and then there's orange, and then yellow, and then good old mysterious green. Uh, maybe we'll get to why it's mysterious. Uh, then you've got blue. Then you've, or so to say, you've got, you have, we'll just say, or cyan technically and then you have what's technically called indigo and then you have technically what's called violet and so that's why then after this is ultraviolet because then it's just violet we can't see okay um and then we get to ultraviolet weight uh ultraviolet light ultraviolet ray uh waves uh now these are the waves that these are uv rays these these are what harm you when you go out and you get a sunburn um, so, and maybe some of you don't get, uh, as, as bad of a sunburn as say someone like me would, um, that's just because your body is just more adept to blocking the, uh, blocking the UV rays that are penetrating the skin, which then results in a tan. Okay. Um, but anyway, so, so this can be harmful in the case again of, as in like sunburn and also sunburn, too much sunburn exposure will then, will then lead to skin cancer. Uh, cause what's happening is that it's, it's more or less, uh, it is destroying and changing DNA cells or sorry, our DNA in your skin cells. Uh, but it's also used for some good. So we use it to disinfect food, to disinfect water. Uh, it's used in medical supplies. It's in the vents of, of all hospitals. So if you did not know this, there are UV uh, lights inside the, like, the ventilation systems of hospitals so that uh, the air being passed through uh, is disinfected. So... And maybe we learned that because of COVID this, this, this year. So... Uh, because a whole lot of businesses have been doing that and incorporating that in different places, such as like airplanes. I know that's that was airplanes and airports are uh, just stepped that up quite a bit. Um, then you get to x-rays. So this is x-rays penetrate the skin uh, and a lot of soft tissues, but not denser materials such as teeth or bones. And, and obviously doctors and dentists use these, but they're also used in airports. Speaking of them, also in airports. Uh, to see through your luggage just to make sure that you're not carrying anything that they don't want you to carry on an airplane. And then lastly, there's gamma rays, uh, gamma radiation. And this is, so this is more or less energy that is emitted from, uh, ad or sorry, yeah, atoms that decompose. So atoms only have so much, they only can hold in so much energy over a span of time. And eventually they just kind of fizzle out, if you want to call it that, and change into a different kind of, of atom. So in the picture here, it's a, this is a good example of uranium. And so what's happening here is an alpha, what's called an alpha particle during alpha, uh, alpha decay. Uh, it will uh, split off from the uranium. Uranium then, then basically changes to thorium. And this is called, again, this is called nuclear decay. And while, when it's in the process of, of basically bumping this alpha particle off, it emits what's called gamma radiation. And it's just more or less just a bundle of energy. It's spitting out energy that, that would be usually with this alpha particle, and it spits it out. And it's untamed, 
um, kind of nasty energy you do not want uh, through like in your in your body in in high doses over a long period of time because it can hurt you. Now you're exposed to gamma radiation all the time. Um, very, very small amounts, relatively speaking. Uh, and so it's nothing to be terribly spooked of, but higher concentrations can do a lot of harm to you. Um, it won't turn you into the Incredible Hulk. It will basically just make you very sick and you will die a very long, painful death, uh, more or less because all your cells on the inside are are breaking down and just shutting off. And it's it's not in worst case scenario. It's not fun. Um, so anyway, uh, both X-rays and gamma rays are used uh, in a technique called radiation therapy, though. This is where it does come in handy. Um, a good use uh, to kill di uh, disease cells in the human body. So like cancer cells that uh, are just replicating too often too much. Um, so anyway, and that is the set of notes, guys. So if you have any more questions for me, make sure you email me. If not, I'll see you in the next one.